That's it. Hi. Thank Hi. you. So, for most people, think about or talk about the development of teachers, I think they usually think about teacher training, but I think teacher training is just one of a whole plethora of different activities that teachers can do to develop. And today I want to give you an example of one of these, which is the one that I think is often least talked about but most effective, and that's action research. It's pretty similar to regular research, except often the, the group you might do it with is smaller, and you take action to basically improve yourself while you're doing the research. So a few years ago, I got really interested in group work and helping students to speak English more during group work. I think group work is really, really important in language classes for, for a few reasons. I mean, one of them is that you know that's one of the times when students get to speak. English the most in their classes when they're working with a partner. Here's a quote from uh, Richard and Lovegard. A great deal of time in teaching is devoted to the interaction among the learners. The quality of this interaction is thought to have a considerable influence on learning. So in other words, if you put students together in groups and they're saying things that are worthwhile, then they'll learn. But if they're speaking about what they had for breakfast in Chinese, then it's probably not very useful. Another reason I thought group work was interesting is because to me it's like this black hole in teaching. So a black hole sucks in all this matter and it, you, you can't see anything that's going on inside it, not even light escapes from it. And group work I think is similar to that because we spend a lot of time thinking about it, planning for it, creating materials for it, giving instructions for it. But what is going on? If you're a teacher, you can't hear what's going on in most of the groups. You can only hear what's going on in the group next to you. So you spend all this time setting it up. You can't really see what's going on. So that's one reason. But another reason why you can't see what's going on is because of this thing called the observer's paradox. You might have heard of this before. So this comes from a guy called William Labov in the 1970s who was doing research in, he was an applied linguist. And Labov wanted to see what kind of everyday language, everyday people used in everyday conversation. So he'd go into people's homes, he'd have a tape recorder, he'd set it up, and he'd get people to talk. And what they said was completely unlike a normal conversation, but it made no sense at all. So Labov found this thing that basically the aim of linguistic research in the community must be to find out how people talk when they're not being systematically observed. Yet, we can only obtain these data by systematic observation. So when you observe people talking, they talk differently. The same thing was, or something similar was observed in the 1920s, I think in Illinois, in America, this, uh, factory called the Hawthorne factory. They got researchers to go there, changed all these different variables, so they, they increased the sort of light, the amount of light that the, the factory workers had. They changed people's desk spaces, and they had these researchers watching the factory workers. And they found that when they changed the light, they increased the amount of light for the workers, they became more productive. And when they made their desk spaces more you know, nicer or whatever, they became more productive. And then they found that after the researchers left, even though there was still more light and they had this nice desk space, the productivity went down. So this Hawthorne effect is basically that this tendency for some people to work harder and perform better when they're participants in an experiment. Individuals may change their behavior due to the attention they're receiving from others. So a bit like when my boss is in the office, I make sure I come all the time, and when he's not, and uh, I don't know Star Wars for the first work. <laughs> so I, I was really interested in seeing if this was similar for students in group work. Is it the same that, that you know, we know that people speak differently when we watch them, and people work harder when we watch them? Is it the same that when we watch our students doing group work, do they behave differently? So I had a couple of, or three research questions. The first one was, do students use the same language when they're monitored? compared to when they're not being monitored, when I'm listening to them and watching them, do they behave differently? When students used L1, so their first language, in this case Chinese, why were they using it? And then what could teachers, or what could I specifically do to get students to use L2, their second language, English, more during group work? So at this time, I got really interested in doing these like little uh, flashcard games with students. Here's an example of one. Uh, these guys are asking each other, how are you? And they reply, and then the other students have to hit the appropriate picture. So they're speaking, listening, and then a little bit of reading. Listen to what language they use. Hi, how are you? Uh, 
I'm okay. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm fine. People work here too long. When I show this to broad people, oh, they're so cute. <laughs> you don't care, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're just not a You're saying, just to show this isn't a fluke, uh, these guys are saying, well, what will you do later? Something like that. And again, they have to touch the appropriate flashcard. Uh, what do you want to do? I want to play, practice the piano. Mm. Hello. Harry, what do you want to do? Uh, So, you probably noticed they just use English the whole time, there was no Chinese, they behaved perfectly, there were no arguments, there were no you know, problems at all, right? And I decided to find out well, what happens when I'm not monitoring. So, I would set up a group work activity, leave my phone next to one of the groups, and then walk away to the other side of the room. So the first group, I did this with, were these guys? That's so cute. Is that me? <laughs> <laughs> this is my plan here. Uh, so these guys were beginner students, Chinese, about seven to eight, and it was another hit the flashcard activity. And here they were asking each other, what's he doing or what's she doing? Someone would reply, and you'd have to hit the right flashcard. <laughs> and after the class, I transcribed what the students said, and I'll show it to you in a second. The Chinese, so the first language, everything they said in that is in pink. Everything they said in English, the second language is in blue. I'll give you about a minute to take a look at it. Try and work out, speak to the person next to you. Can you see any pattern in how they're using the two different languages? So Reese, what, what did you what did you notice? Uh, it was like the procedure that kind of reminded each other what's how to play the game or kind of stuff. Was in it's Chinese. Right. So I, I thought this was almost like a turn taking line to do something. It's you, it's me. Who's going next? All this kind of stuff, and yet all the sort of target language was in English. Because as you heard earlier, I used to be a civil engineer. I decided to make a graph, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I found this really, really interesting, right? Because I, I always thought before that students use Chinese because the, the English was too difficult for them. But when you think of the English you're using yeah. here, it's actually more complicated than what they were saying in the first language, right? These are really simple, like one word. Utterances, and yet the English was in the present continuous tense, so that was more difficult. And it made me really reassess, like, why why are students using different languages for different purposes? So the next group I had, I did a, a similar activity with these guys, but this time when I set up the activity, I demonstrated for them how to take turns. So this this activity was about saying the name of an animal. So uh, during the modeling, I would say, Darren would say an animal, or me would say an animal, Will would say an animal, so that hopefully they would know how to take turns. Again, take a look at this, see if you can spot any difference from the one before. Alright, so hopefully you can see that instead of using Chinese to take turns, now all this turn taking is being done in English. You hopefully notice there was a lot more English than the last time. There was some off-topic thing, like you hit my hand, and someone's trash talking to someone. <laughs> uh, and then a, a bit of correction was the main thing that they were using Chinese for. So, yeah, it's a white rabbit, you say that animal, and things like, you said it wrong, it's not a this, it's a that. Those things were done in Chinese. So, another class with these guys afterwards? And this time, I modeled some different language. So I told them that the simplest way that you can correct someone, which is just saying, which my boss uses for me, no. That was my modeling the, the correction uh, at the start. And here you go again. This is the difference in, in English and Chinese. So you can see that here, no, it's not. What color is it? No, it's white. Oh no. 
<laughs> All that was done in English. A little bit of turn taking, some of it was in English and, and some of it was in, in Chinese. But you can see there a big difference from that, that first class mm -hmm. where they were really using a lot more Chinese. It's a house mouse, it was white. Now these, these guys were interesting. These guys were a bit older, so they're about 11 or 12, I think. And they were a bit higher level, they were elementary students. And I don't know, how many of you here can speak two languages? Yeah. Did you ever find that you have a conversation with someone, and afterwards you can remember what you talked about, but you can't remember what language you had the conversation in? Right. So I, I did a, a class with these guys, and I, I wasn't monitoring them, but I could hear that they were speaking a lot of Chinese during the group work. And afterwards, I'd say, so guys, how, how much Chinese did you use? when you were talking. And he said, we didn't, we didn't use any. And I, I don't think they were, maybe they were lying to me, but I don't, I don't think that they were aware of what language they were using. So with these guys, I, I tried to um, sort of gamify this use of English and Chinese. So in this game, everyone had a, a bunch of little cards with the names of some jobs on them. And you had to describe the job to the person. So you might say, oh, uh, this is someone who fixes uh, pipes. So this is someone who builds doors. I told them that if you hear someone else speaking Chinese during this game, you can steal one of the cards. Right? And the winner in the end would be the person who had the most cards. And if he guessed correctly, you, you got a card as well. So th this is what they ended up doing in this class. So again, this is me not, not monitoring them. And I thought this was amazing because compared to that, first class earlier, where they were just using English for the, the target language. We have all sorts of cool things here. So they started reinforcing the rules, and taking turns. We saw that earlier. They were asking about the language. How do you say this? How do you say that? Correcting each other. But I, I thought this, this was my favorite bit of this whole thing, was that, that the word here was food critic. And they call it food carrot, and food cabbage, and so food, <laughs> food critic. So again, all of a sudden, just a few lessons by Investigating, we went from pretty much half and half English and Chinese to all these things like someone who fixes doors, how many cars do you have, and <laughs> food carrots. <laughs> so, to go back to those objectives from earlier, do students use the same language when they're being monitored or unmonitored, or are they like other human beings? They definitely use different language when we're monitoring them and when they're not monitoring them. What are they using? Their first language form. Well, over this whole project, there, there were a variety of different things, but you can see the three main uses. Some of it was a replacement for target language, but a lot of it was turn taking, a lot of it was off topic, and there was also some correction as well. But it definitely wasn't because they didn't know the English for it. It seemed to be more that they didn't know that was part of the activity. And finally, what can teachers do to get students to use English more during group work? Well, I find the two main things were just predicting what language, modeling it before the activity, and then doing something to encourage the students to monitor themselves so that they were uh, policing each other, so to speak. And from that, I came up with three golden rules that I always use for whenever I'm setting up group work. So predicting the, the language that the students are gonna use during group work when I'm planning a lesson, modeling the language that I think they're gonna use. So for example, if it's a uh, so a cutting activity or a craft activity and they have to draw animals. They're probably going to actually use words like pen, pencil, red, scissors. They're going to use those as much as they're actually going to talk about the animals that they're drawing. And finally get students to focus on speaking English rather than Chinese. So that was one example of action research. Hope you find that interesting. And I, I found that helped me a lot to develop as a teacher. But you can also do these other things as well. <laughs> Thanks.